from Las Vegas. It's the Q covering Oracle's modern marketing experience. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your host, John Furrier. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for Oracle's Modern Marketing Experience 2016. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the host of theCUBE. Our next guest is David Skinner, Vice President of Strategic Alliances and Partnerships at Merkle, and James Malarney, um, who's the Vice President at the Oracle Partnerships. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much, John. Thanks for having Thank me. So, big announcement. Merkle, huge deal with Oracle, very successful modern agency. That's kind of how I see it. You guys are doing some pretty cutting edge work, on not only pioneering, plowing the fields, but delivering great value because you know, Oracle normally was, owns the database market. They're in a ton of enterprises, IT, but now as MarTech and marketing cloud moves into the CMO digital stack, the agency equation changes. So, Share the, your thoughts on Merkle, you've been super successful. What's been your secret formula? What's the, what's the share the secret Coke recipe? What's the, what's the formula? Right, so uh, Merkle's always been about driving marketing from the perspective of real people. And it used to be that real people were reached via direct mail, you'd send a piece of mail to your mailbox and manage large databases for companies that, that did that. And uh, the digital economy and digital advertising has now evolved from targeting cookies and targeting devices, which is where digital was for the last 20 years when the ad server was launched, to in the last three or so years, we've been able to actually target real people in digital. And that's really where Merkle's taken our historic strength around managing large advertisers, customer databases, having our hands on their transaction data to the benefit of their campaigns. And that's a role that the traditional broadcast agency hasn't had. If you're an agency of record, you're probably not going to have uh, customer data for your, for your advertisers, but being a, a database provider, Merkle has sat there, and we've now taken uh, that strength in data management and applied that to digital. And I've had a lot of uh, experience and, and strength working with platforms like Oracle to take that data for our customers, activate that out in execution channels via the Oracle Marketing Cloud, and then being able to close the loop and bring that back and actually measure the results. Uh, so as a performance marketing agency, we tie all this back to ROI and performance. We only get paid if, if that performs. Uh, so that's really the formula That's the taken premise of you guys, performance-based. So you kind of moved upstream, if you will, from technology platform up to agency-like stuff versus agencies today going, hey, I'm your ad people, we don't, we don't measure anything, it's all, it all feels good, down to platform. Right. So it's harder to become a platform player when you're an agency, but it's easy to automate right. some stuff if you're a platform. So that you have to kind of kind of dance on that line of where you're creative, or do you guys have a creative component, or we do. Yeah, we do creative. Originally, we we started creative in direct mail and email, but we have a full creative shop. Uh, over 500 people now developing. Again, uh, more performance-based creative is where we came from. So uh, we have 200 rules on things that drive performance and yeah. response within an email or within a, a piece of display. Uh, we've now extended that, and we're doing video creative. So that's that's a piece of it. Um, so it's really both the the build, we, we talk about build and run. So build being the, the onboarding and setup of uh, things like the Oracle Marketing Cloud, and then run is the services that make that sing and dance and perform. So we know when you say performance-based, if you go back to the search days, see cost per acquisition, you had to be in that game. Right. right? There's always uh, that whole business, really that search engine marketing, but now as you come into this new generation of real-time data, multiple data sources, pressure at the cloud with unlimited compute potential, Right the value is shifting to the data, you have a heritage in data. Tell us what you see there. I mean, what is, what's some of the state of the art things you're doing for customers? Where's the areas that are still hot spots that you're still kind of getting the scar tissue on? And where's it mature? Can you, can you add some color to that? Sure, yeah, I mean, a general rule of thumb from a data side is that if someone's raised their hand, that they want to be reached by a campaign, they're, they're two times more likely to respond to that campaign. So at the end of the day, Merkle's in the business of finding those hand raisers and finding those responders, and if we can effectively find them, we're going to drive much more effective campaigns. So, so some interaction piece of data. Right, exactly. If someone either comes to a website and opts in, or if someone uh, responds to a campaign and says, I want to learn more, those are all signs that they're in market, and those are going to be the people that perform best. Um, you know, in terms of real examples, we've seen uh, great examples where you know the, the, the omni-channel has been a buzzword now for the last couple years in our industry, but 
Uh, we've seen some excellent examples where, uh, for example, for a hotel company, we ran a test and control where we had multiple channels going on as part of that campaign. We had search as part of that, as part of that campaign. We had display uh, and we had email. And we were able to demonstrate that if a control group was exposed just to search, they were less likely to respond and convert than a separate group that was both reached by an email, also searched, and um, came to the website. So uh, real examples of up to 50% lift in conversion by reaching folks who are in market across multiple channels. Because uh, you know another one of my favorite stats is that uh, over 60% of uh, online transactions now start in one channel and, and complete in the other. So we'll search on our phone, we'll find out about a product, we'll research uh, that shirt we're thinking about or that uh, car we're thinking about and then purchase another channel. And again, being able to connect the dots between those two around this data around real people uh, is where we've had a lot of success. That's the nonlinear progression you're seeing on digital. Right. There's different engagement points and you have to keep that active data around to support kind of figuring right. out who the hand raiser is yeah. and kind of where they are in that discovery phase. Yeah, and we talk about how the, uh, you know, the, the, the idea of the, the purchase funnel is dead and it's really a purchase cycle. So you see people yeah. rapidly cycling through different parts from awareness through consideration through mm -hmm. intent and, and often, in particular to digital, someone can be fairly far along in that cycle yeah. and jump out to, to a competitor. If Peter Burris was here, he'd be all over this. This is one of the things he's working on with his research. I'd love to get your car to follow up with him because that's something that we would love to kind of drill down on yeah. our research and, Absolutely. and share some of that. Um, James, talk about the fit with Oracle. So how does this all fit with you guys? So obviously they got some serious market power. Um, you had mentioned 500 data scientists on staff or statisticians, basically data people. Yeah. Uh, data science analysts all kind of blending together these days with the visualization tools and technology out there. How does it fit into Oracle? Because you guys are enabling them to be successful, I'm assuming with Oracle right. and among your 900 integrated partners. Yeah. How does so it all fit in? They're, Merkle is a very special outfit. Obviously, they grew out of the MarTech world and grown into the ad tech world, third biggest purchaser of Google AdWords, et cetera. So they're very exciting from that perspective. They have huge scale, global reach. And they've made a lot, a lot of very interesting acquisitions over the past year or so. Uh, in addition, they're what we call a full stack shop. They are capable across the very beginning of the marketing automation, ad tech lifecycle, I from the audience building with the DMP to the different types of channel orchestration, marketing automation, all the way back to things like optimization on the backside with Maximizer. So they have full capability to roll out multiple products for multiple customers globally all at the same time. And as the Oracle Marketing Cloud evolves, we need partners that can be versed in multiple products and have global reach to support the type of global brands we support. So they're using Oracle technology and go to market or both or how, do you, how does it fit in? Both. Both, so we are selling and servicing Oracle technology, the, the Oracle Marketing Cloud in particular, as, as well as the Oracle Data Cloud. And similarly, we're going to market together where uh, being large organizations who both serve enterprise customers, uh, we're finding we have a lot of joint customers yeah. where we can kind of join arms and work together, yeah. uh, as well as a new logo where we're identifying opportunities and, and going to market with the uh, with So the in some cases you joint sales calls together or you guys are just lead it together Pass it through right. and direct to Oracle? Right, yeah, kind of. Because you're full service. All basically. the above, yeah. Okay, so I, I got to ask you, David, so what's the biggest um, revelation that's now becoming more mainstream in terms of the agency's future? I mean, I'm in the media business, so I've, a day doesn't go by where media's not dead and video's not going to save the media, all these things going around the industry, around the media business. And I always say it's the same game, just a different formula, data's right. driven, not, data's a big part of it. But the agencies themselves are being disrupted. Right. What's your take on this landscape? Because this is now a huge dollars on the table. Right. From media spend that could be reallocated to digital, other digital, new business models. What's your take on the industry? Yeah, I mean, well first, you know, one of my favorite stats in the industry is that marketing over time as a percentage of GDP, advertising as a percentage of GDP, has been remarkably consistent over time. So advertising globally is about 3% of GDP and it tracks GDP almost exactly over the last like 80 years. So any changes we see, any growth we see is really a, a share shift between channels. And I think the biggest shift we've seen is digital's had so much attention, rightfully so, over the last 20 years. It's really been a share shift from print to digital. So a lot of advertising dollars have fled print and moved to digital, and that's really where the action's been. Um, you know, in terms of, I think, 
the, the major change in the agency business model is really around uh, what we like to talk about at Merkle is people-based marketing. And what we mean by that is, again, taking the concepts of direct marketing, one-to-one -one messaging, and doing that at broad scale across multiple channels. And we're starting to see that agencies are looking to invest in people-based data. Agencies are renting U.S. household databases from companies like Merkle who have that data and starting to move from panel-based planning to people-based planning. So historically, agencies planned with a panel with the ability to now target real people in channels like Facebook and Twitter and Google and all the major media companies are shifting to, hey, you don't want to get a like from a cookie. What you want to do is get a purchase from a person. And these digital media channels can prove the end-to-end -end ability to do that. And agencies now are catching up to ensure that their planning and yeah. their execution can happen at that at that people basis. And, and that's really the holy grail, but you got to know what you're looking for, right? right? So, you know, if you don't know there's been a cookie like and a person buying, that's the transactional life cycle, right? I right. mean, it's the progression. Right. So you got to, I mean, how would you rate the progress bar on this? Do people know what they're looking for? And they, this is, a, everything's measurable now. Right, but I, yet, I think we're getting there. I think, um, you know, if you look at where the industry was a few years ago versus I think where it is today and where it's going, in particular around, around the data, Theme. Uh, so we were talking earlier around how you know, data is really the oil of the information economy. It's this, it's 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 the key ingredient that the companies who figure that out are most successful. And Oracle's really built their their marketing cloud with a data first theme. You know, acquisitions around Data Logics and Blue Chi and, and similar. Um, is that the main reason for the partnership? It's I think is the the fundamental reason why our companies uh, align so well is that it's shared DNA for both of us. Um, so when you look at the data evolution, we've progressed from uh, 10 years ago, the only data in marketing was used offline by direct mail lists and send people mail yeah. in their mailbox. In the last five years, this whole cookie-based economy of online data came up. Companies like Blue Chi associating in-market behavior like someone who's in-market for travel or went to an auto website and they're in-market for auto and associating that with a cookie. And, we, and we've built this fabulous uh, targetable universe online using very true data signals, uh, cookie-based data. And then where I think we're now seeing the industry evolve to is real anonymized and privacy safe, but, but true people-based data for digital targeting. And with what is Oracle's differentiators? What's your take on Oracle? Why are they different in this marketing cloud era? Uh, the, the, the themes Oracle uses to talk about the marketing cloud really resonate for me, and that's that Oracle is buying the and acquiring and has built this cloud by acquiring the one or, the one or two uh, ranked leader in each of these verticals. So starting with the DMP, they acquired a, a leading DMP, uh, going over to the uh, multi-channel campaign management, you know, two great platforms, and eloquent responses, and a similar in Maximizer. So you know, by having best of breed in each channel, it's a great place to start. And now we're at a point where, and I think we're seeing this in the industry as the larger marketing clouds are really emerging and separating from more of the venture-backed point solutions. Um, the, now the, the connective platform, tissue. Basically. Yeah, it's a yeah. platform. It's a platform. Right, and, and the, the connective tissue between those uh, solutions is now being built to the point to pay off on that, on that multi-channel story. Well, they can enable these venture-backed. James, let me talk about a lot of Mintigos here, they're venture-backed. Yeah. They're going to come on and see um, some people from even Salesforce's ecosystems starting to come into the fold. Yeah. It, is that the trend we're seeing? Well, what's, <laughs> what's very interesting about this world is you don't necessarily have to be very big to have a big influence. So we've got some, you know, Merkle's a very big operation, but some partners can be very nimble and really influence how our customers You can go as deep things. as you want. I mean, yeah. if you have full global scale like Merkle, they got the whole portfolio to, to work with, yeah. obviously tightly integrate with you guys at the partnership level, yeah. but you can have some other channel partner come in stand up and do a point solution and really kick butt at it. Well, I mean, well even that, we even have small, smaller partners, a fraction of the yeah. size of Merkle that can also work across the full stack for customers. But what's yeah. really interesting about Merkle, kind of like an agency of the future, is the fact that they're performance based. So uh, they're, how they get paid is a function of how well the technology performs. And for them to actually build a lot of stuff around our technology is a stamp of approval around our technology. So we want to make sure they have everything they need around enablement and performance to make sure that their customers do well. David, final so. question um, for you. What's the big 
uh, aha in terms of what's happening in the market? What's the one thing that people should pay attention to that they might, might not be hearing about or reading about or seeing in the news and or in the industry trade that they need to pay attention to? If you could highlight you know, one or two handful of things saying, hey, let's, these are areas you cannot miss the boat on. Right, right. Uh, you know, one interesting one for me is that uh, lots of companies are becoming media companies. So companies that you'd historically think of as airlines or retailers are now tapping into their customer data assets, which is the most valuable asset that a lot of companies have, uh, and, and using that in a way to actually drive media and drive their audiences back to their own properties and create this virtuous cycle of, hey, we do business together, I, I want to talk to you not just on my own website if I'm a retailer, for example, but I want to be able to bring you back That's with a new loop. customers. It's a new loop. That's a new loop. Right. That they're controlling the distribution. Right. And you want to have that resident on their critical infrastructure on, on property. That's where they can manage some of their IDs and data, exactly. right? So if you look at you know, retailers. Versus being parasitic to Facebook. Right. Or Google. That they can own it. So if you look at you know, large retailers, you know, the largest, you know, Amazon, yeah. Walmart, these businesses are now some of the largest media business as well, where if I'm Pampers and I want to reach my customer, I may not just be going to my traditional website, to media properties like New York Times, but I might be going to Walmart and Amazon as advertising properties. So you know, we see that as a really interesting trend and we're and actually not helping exclusive enable exclusive either, right? You can continue to do your you know, wander around the web, but if you're if the advertiser, the brand, spending the money to reach the customer, they're activating the interaction. Right. Why don't they own the data? Right. I think that's what you're kind of getting at, right? Absolutely. And and they're they're taking advantage of the fact that they do have that closed loop data. Oracle could be the ID system. Well, that's a different conversation. <laughs> well. <laughs> we'll talk to Mark Hurd about that and uh, Dave Donatelli and uh, Larry Ellison when we get them on the cube at Oracle exactly. Open World this year, so. That's all about the data yeah. at the end of the day. We'll so. get Larry Ellison on, I promise. Herd's been on. Okay, guys, thanks Great. so much. Thank really so appreciate much, it. Thanks for sharing the insight. Congratulations yeah, thank you. on your partnership. Uh, global scale, from small, medium-sized enterprises all over the global scale. Agencies are changing. Merkel, modern agency here on theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break. Awesome. Thanks, John.